Hi lovely year twos, hope you're all okay. This term in school our topic should be Roald Dahl, so we're going to carry on as if it is. And I'm going to read you one of my favourite Roald Dahl stories called The Twits. I'm going to read a few chapters every day and after I've read there'll be a little activity that you can do at home. So I'll start by reading the first chapter which is called Hairy Faces. What a lot of hairy faced men there are around nowadays. When a man grows hair all over his face it is impossible to tell what he really looks like. Perhaps that's why he does it. He'd rather you didn't know. Then there's the problem of washing. When the very hairy ones wash their faces, it must be as big a job as when you and I wash the hair on our heads. So what I want to know is this. How often do all these hairy faced men wash their faces? Is it only once a week like us on Sunday nights? And do they shampoo it? Do they use a hairdryer? Do they rub tonic? hair tonic in it to stop their faces from going bald? Do they go to a barber to have their hairy faces cut and trimmed or do they do it themselves in front of the bathroom mirror with nail scissors? I don't know but next time you see a man with a hairy face maybe you will look at him more closely and start wondering about some of these things. Next chapter Mr Twit Mr Twit was one of these very hairy faced men. The whole of his face except for his forehead, his eyes and his nose was covered with thick hair. The stuff even sprouted in revolting tufts out of his nostrils and ear holes. Mr Twit felt that this hairiness made him look terrifically wise and grand. But in truth he was neither of these things. Mr Twit was a twit. He was born a twit, and now at the age of 60, he was a bigger twit than ever. There is a picture of him. The hair on Mr Twit's face didn't grow smooth and matted as it does on most hairy-faced men. It grew in spikes that stuck out straight like the bristles of a nail brush. And how often did Mr Twit wash this bristly, nail brushy face of his? The answer is never not even on Sundays. He hadn't washed it for years. Dirty beards. As you know, an ordinary, unhairy face like yours or mine simply gets a bit smudgy if it is not washed often enough. And there's nothing so awful about that. But a hairy face is a very different matter. Things cling to hairs, especially food. Things like gravy go right in among the hairs and stay there. You and I can wipe our smooth faces with a flannel or a sponge and we quickly look more or less all right again. But the hairy man cannot do that. We can also, if we're careful, eat our meals without spreading food all over our faces. But not so the hairy man. Watch carefully next time you see a hairy man eating his lunch and you will notice that even if he opens his mouth very wide it is impossible for him to get a spoonful of beef stew or ice cream and chocolate sauce into it without leaving some of it on the hairs. Ugh. Mr Twit didn't even bother to open his mouth wide when he ate. As a result, and because he never washed, there were always hundreds of bits of old breakfasts and lunches and suppers sticking to the hair around his face. They weren't big bits, mind you, because he used to wipe those off with the back of his hand or on his sleeve while he was eating. But if you looked closely, not that you'd ever want to, you would see tiny little specks of dried up scrambled eggs stuck to the hairs and spinach and tomato ketchup and fish fingers and minced chicken livers and all the other disgusting things Mr Twit liked to eat. There he is. If you looked closer still, hold your noses ladies and gentlemen, if you peered deep into the moustachey bristles sticking out over his upper lip, 
he would probably see much larger objects that had escaped the wipe of his hand. Things that had been there for months and months, like a piece of maggoty green cheese, or a mouldy old cornflake, or even the slimy tail of a tinned sardine. Because of all this, Mr Twit never went really hungry. By sticking out his tongue and curling it sideways to explore the hairy jungle around his mouth, he was always able to find a tasty morsel here and there to nibble on. Ugh. What I'm trying to tell you is that Mr Twit was a foul and smelly old man. He was also an extremely horrid old man, as you will find out in a moment. And there's a picture of the tin sardines and Stilton cheese and cornflakes stuck in his beard. Blech. Yuck. Next chapter is called Mrs Twit. Mrs Twit was no better than her husband. She did not, of course, have a hairy face. It was a pity she didn't, because that, at any rate, would have hidden some of her fearful ugliness. Take a look at her. Have you ever seen a woman with an uglier face than that? I doubt it. But the funny thing is that Mrs Twit wasn't born ugly. She had quite a nice fat, uh, quite a nice face when she was young. The ugliness had grown upon her year by year as she got older. Why would that happen? I will tell you why. If a person has ugly thoughts, it begins to show on the face. And when that person has ugly thoughts every day, every week, every year, the face gets uglier and uglier until it gets so ugly you can hardly bear to look at it. A person who has good thoughts cannot ever be ugly. You can have a wonky nose or a crooked mouth, double chin, stick out teeth. But if you have good thoughts, they will shine out of you. They will shine out of your face like sunbeams and you will always look lovely. That is true. Nothing shone out of Mrs Twit's face. In her right hand she carried a walking stick. She used to tell people this was because she had warts growing on the sole of her left foot and walking was painful. But the real reason she carried a stick was so that she could hit things with it. Fix things like dogs and cats and small children. And then there was the glass eye. Mrs Twit had a glass eye that was always looking the other way. And the next chapter is called The Glass Eye. You can play a lot of tricks with a glass eye because you can take it out and pop it back in again any time you like. You can bet your life Mrs Twit knew all the tricks. One morning she took out her glass eye and dropped it into Mr Twit's mug of beer when he wasn't looking. Mr Twit sat there drinking the beer slowly. The froth made a white ring on the hairs around his mouth. He wiped the white froth onto his sleeve and wiped his sleeve on his trousers. You're plotting something, Mrs Twit said, keeping her back turned so he wouldn't see that she had taken out her glass eye. Whenever you go all quiet like that, I know very well you're plotting something. Mrs Twit was right. Mr Twit was plotting away like mad. He was trying to think of a really nasty trick he could play on his wife that day. You better be careful, Mrs Twit said, because when I see you starting to plot, I watch you like a wombat. Oh, do shut up, you old hag, Mr Twit said. He went on drinking his beer and his evil mind kept working away on the latest horrid trick he was going to play on the old woman. Suddenly, as Mr Twit, dr- tipped, Mr. Twit tipped the last drop of beer down his throat, 
he caught sight of Mrs Twit's awful glass eye staring up at him from the bottom of the mug. It made him jump. I told you I was watching you! <laughs> Cackled Mrs Twit. I've got eyes everywhere, so you better be careful. Oh, they are rotten. Next chapter is called The Frog. To pay her back for the glass eye in his beer, Mr Twit decided he would put a frog in Mrs Twit's bed. He caught a big one down by the pond and carried it back secretly in a box. That night, when Mrs Twit was in the bathroom getting ready for bed, Mr Twit slipped the frog between her sheets. Then he got into his own bed and waited for the fun to begin. Mrs Twit came back and climbed into her bed and put out the light. She lay there in the dark, scratching her tummy. Her tummy was itching. Dirty old hags like her always have itchy tummies. Then all at once she felt something cold and slimy crawling over her feet. She screamed, Aah! What's the matter with you? Mr Twit said. Help! Screamed Mrs Twit, bouncing about. There's something in my bed! Oh, I bet it's that giant skilly wig I saw on the floor just now, Mr Twit said. The what? Screamed Mrs Twit. I tried to kill it, but it got away, Mr Twit said. It's got teeth like screwdrivers. Screamed Mrs Twit. Save me, it's all over my feet. It'll bite off your toes, said Mr Twit. Mrs Twit fainted. Mr Twit got out of bed and fetched a jug of cold water. He poured the water over Mrs Twit's head to wake her up. The frog crawled up from under the sheets to get near the water. It started jumping about on the pillow. Frogs love water. This one was having a really good time. There she is in her bed. When Mrs Twit came to, the frog had just jumped on her face. This is not a nice thing to happen to anyone in bed at night. She screamed again. My golly, it is a giant skilly wiggler, Mr Twit said. It will bite off your nose. Mrs Twit leapt out of the bed and flew downstairs and spent the night on the sofa. The frog went to sleep on her pillow. That's where we're going to leave it for today. Your activity for you to try is to draw a picture of Mr Twit's face with all the horrid, disgusting, leftover food sticking out of the spiky nail brushy beard, out of his horrible, smelly, foul, disgusting, hairy face. On the website there are some pictures to help you. Have a look, see if that gives you a clue what you could do. I did one earlier. Let me go and get it. Let me find mine. Here's the one that I did earlier. Mr Twit. And I've labelled the food around him. So you've got the spinach, fish fingers, scrambled eggs. What's that ketchup, sardine tail, but it's totally up to you how you do it, whether you want to make it with pens and pencils and do one out of whatever things you've got lying around the house, totally up to you. Take a photograph or scan it in, put it on the Purple Mash blog so we can have a look and see your creations and I'll see you tomorrow for the next part of the Twits. Bye-bye.